Hey guys, it's Sam. Today we're going to talk about front surface toric guest permeable lenses, or at least introduce them. Um, and before we get started, um, if you find this content helpful, please go ahead and subscribe, like, um, share your comments with me. I'll be uh, more than happy to respond to them. But before we could talk about uh, toric, front surface toric guest permeable lenses, we need to kind of understand um, K readings, uh, fitting uh, contact lenses in general, um, and some of the different schools of thought around that. So let's just do an intro to that. Um, so the first thing to know with the cornea, the cornea is measured in a dioptic strength. The average cornea is about plus 43 diopters. Um, so when we can see K readings for contact lenses, we can view those as diopters or we could view them as a radius of curvature measurement, right? Because we know like a 45 diopter lens equals 7.50 millimeters in a radius of curvature. Um, but when we're fitting contact lenses, there's some things that we need to consider regardless of the type of contact lens we know we're going to fit. So the first one is the glasses refraction, right? So we need that manifest refraction to be able to determine what, um, what the visual needs are of the patient. So for an example, we can have a prescription minus 250, minus 150, axis 180. So that's a common um, eyeglass refraction. And so from that, if somebody wants to get contact lenses, we have a, a myriad of options. There's so many different choices that we can uh, make, but on the NCLE, it's going to uh, give you some various choices and you have to choose the best one. So that's where we're kind of getting towards that and learning some different principles of fitting. So you can uh, weed out the bad choices on that. So your first step, look at the glasses refraction. Make sure it's in minus cylinder form. Always have to make sure it's in minus cylinder form. For example, if this was in plus cylinder form, right, we would um, transpose. So you add the cylinder to the sphere, you get minus four, change the sign, and rotate the axis 90 degrees. So if you saw this prescription, the first thing you would want to do is to make it look like that so we can work with it. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna cross that out there. So you wanna transpose it. You'd wanna compensate for vertex distance if that were a need. Uh, with this prescription, we're not really going to consider that. Four diopters, really over four diopters, you're gonna start considering that um, because remember, eyeglasses were refracted, um, the four opter is further away from the eye and contact lenses are fit on the eye and all lenses behave more plus power or less minus when they're off the eye. So if you had a, you know, a minus four out here, it's really acting like a, you know, a minus 3.87 might be on your eye. So you're always gonna wanna, in a myopic prescription, step it back just a little bit. And we have videos on compensating for vertex distance, so invite you all to check those out. But make sure it's in minus cylinder form, compensate for vertex distance. Then we have got to evaluate the K readings. So the K readings, that's talking about our, our corneal curvature, right? So if, if the cornea is completely spherical, you're gonna see the same K reading um, at all meridians. If there's corneal astigmatism present, there's going to be a variance between um, your steepest and flattest meridian. So it could be 44 by 42 diopters you know, say 42 slash 44 at 90. That means there's two diopters of corneal astigmatism present, the difference in that. So for example, um, let's just look at this. If this is our K readings that we're given, then we're gonna see that the cornea is not spherical or it'd be 44 by 44, right? It would show no variance, but because there's a two diopter difference, we're showing that there's two diopters of corneal astigmatism um, for this patient. So, um, and what, why you need to know that is you need to be able to compare the refraction with the um, K readings to see what type of astigmatism it is. Is it corneal astigmatism? Is it lenticular astigmatism? So for this example, let's get rid of that. I really need to get, a, get an eraser. Let's just say these are our K readings, 44 by 44 as it's 90. So there's a lot we can glean from this. If this is our refraction, the minus 250, minus 150 at 180, 
and then we have a 44k reading. So we can see there's no difference between our two, our major and our, our flattest and our steepest meridian on the cornea. So there's no corneal astigmatism present on that. However, the prescription is real, revealing one and a half diopters of astigmatism in it, in that manifest refraction. Manifest means, you know, to, to become or to show is, is what is present, right? So this person needs that correction to be able to see. They need that astigmatism component, that cylinder component. However, it's not the cornea's fault, right? We can see that there is no, no corneal difference in the steepness of the cornea. So for this example, you know, uh, this is one that we're going to consider a front toric gas permeable lens for. Now, as a sidebar, we could do a HEMA, just soft contact lens for this patient, and they would be absolutely fine because it's just going to drape the cornea. Um, it's not going to induce any astigmatism from a, you know, the tear um, film of the cornea. It's not going to fill in that lens because, again, it's just draping the cornea. But if we have gas permeable lenses to choose from, this is one that we consider a front toric. Um, because a front toric lens, just like the name says, it, we don't need to overcomplicate it, right? A base curve on a contact lens, uh, we call the central posterior curve of the lens. And the key word there is posterior, right? Because it's the back curve. It's the curve that's against your eye. So that's where the base curve of it is. Um, so if we have a front toric lens, it means that the central posterior curve of the lens is spherical. It just has the one K reading. It just has that, you know, that 44 on it, if we're fitting it on K, it is just, um, you know, no difference in meridian. But the front toric part is we're going to have that cylindrical component on the exterior or the anterior of the lens, the front of it. So why we're going to do that is because if we put it on the back surface, that central posterior curve, it may induce astigmatism. Uh, for example, if you have um, a K reading of, let's see, 44 slash 43 at 90, we could see that the cornea is showing one diopter of astigmatism on it, right? But what if our manifest refraction was um, just a negative three sphere? So we'll flip things around. Let's say the sphere power, um, the refraction is spherical. There's no cylindrical component. What's going to happen if you put a spherical lens, a gas permeable lens on the cornea? It's actually going to induce astigmatism because you know that um, a spherical gas permeable lens can correct for up to three doctors of with the rule astigmatism, up to two doctors of against the rule astigmatism. So it's actually going to fill in between the cornea and the lens and actually induce astigmatism. So for this patient, we wouldn't want to use a gas permeable lens because it's going to create that astigmatism. We would have to use more of a, you know, just a soft um, spherical lens on this patient. But going back to front toric lenses, what you need to know is that they're generally good if you have over one and a quarter diopters of astigmatism, because if you have less than that, you're really probably gonna lean more towards a spherical equivalent of the lens, because you'll have similar acuity in that, um, and you're gonna, you're gonna lose some comfort on the front toric lens, because also important, and a key thing to remember for your test, is that front toric lenses require some sort of a prism ballast to them, and that's generally about one and a half diopters of base down prism um, on the lens just for help with uh, for rotation so that the lens centers properly, right? So you can also truncate the lens and different things, but in general, it's gonna have about one and a half doctors of base down prism on that lens. And remember, a prism is just a wedge, so it's a triangular shaped lens, so the base is going down. Um, and it's also, you're gonna tell them to mark it, put a dot at the six o'clock position. You know, that becomes very important once you're evaluating the lens on the patient. So I know it's a lot to kind of put together in this, um, but, but just reviewing some of the best practices with contact lens fitting, um, it'll become more natural just learning when to use a you know, spherical gas permeable, soft lens, back torque, bi torque, front surface torque. And once you learn the basic steps, you know, of evaluating for uh, minus cylinder, comparing the K readings, 
and then just it's just really kind of deducing from that what your best option is so again just ask me any comments you might have i do appreciate you subscribing to the channel um, i look forward to putting out more content here in the next few days thank you all